like 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you, Caught. ABC reporter immediately regrets trying to disgrace Newt Gingrich. This Sunday Newt Gingrich was truly fierce. By now, the former Speaker of the Republican Party has been a guest on several morning shows. His appearances were made primarily to defend President Donald Trump and to destroy the lies and propaganda that the mainstream media holds against him. ABC's Martha Raddatz was joined by Gingrich on the morning show this week. You might remember Martha Raddatz as being the moderator of the second Trump vs. Hillary debate. By many, Raddatz was considered to be the worst moderator of all time. This is due to her obvious anti-Trump bias. While trying to embarrass Newt Gingrich on her show, we can see that she immediately regretted it. Gingrich's argumentative opinion on the Trump-Russia collusion is that it's rubbish, or in his words, the situation is described as Russian baloney. Raditz asked Gingrich about his comments downplaying the Trump-Russia investigation as nonsense. There's no evidence. I mean, first of all, if you want to investigate Russia, fine. How about Bill Clinton's $500,000 speech? How about Podesta's brother who is a registered agent for a Russia bank? How about the Iranian deal responded Gingrich? He continued by stating that he is happy to see what Russia's relationships have turned into. I actually think it would be healthy to have congressional hearings on foreign influence peddling in the U.S. way beyond the Russians. I think that's important for the future of our democracy. Further, he continued to defend Trump in providing us with information that no one has suggested that Donald Trump had anything to do with colluding with the Russians. There's not a bit of evidence he did. Madam Raditz surely thought Newt wouldn't provide with a suitable and good response, but he eventually humiliated her on her own show. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predictions. Breaking news newest revelations will make special counsel Mueller resign immediately. We will now show you a list of some remarks about the special counsel Robert Mueller when he got appointed to investigate the alleged Trump, Russia connection. John McCain said, a great choice for a special counsel. Senator Chuck Schumer said, exactly the right kind of individual to serve as a special counsel in the Russia investigation. Congressman Darrell Issa said, somebody we all trust. Nancy Pelosi said, a good first step. House Speaker Paul Ryan said, I welcome his role at Department of Justice. Rep. Jason Chaffetz said, Mueller is a great selection. Impeccable credentials. Should be widely accepted. Mueller was appointed as a special counsel because James Comey was missing courage to stand up and tell the whole truth. Mueller basically got the role of Watergate special counsel John Adore. One objective journalist. Doug Ross, however, has a different point of view about Mueller's appointment. He is very skeptical about this because of the anthrax attack on the Capitol in 2001. In 2004, retired Foreign Service officer and intelligence analyst Kenneth J. Dillon tells Accuracy in Media, AIM, the FBI learned that the anthrax mailer was an Al-Qaeda operative. Under White House pressure, Mueller suppressed this finding and continued to hunt for a domestic suspect. When scientist Bruce Evans committed suicide in 2008, Mueller blamed him for the mailings, then lied to a Senate committee about it. The whole Russia story is just another story that has the intention to defocus the public of the real problems. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. The truth is out. Trump just made this CEO's meet and do something incredible for all of the U.S. citizens. On Monday our president, Donald Trump, is going to meet with many influential technology CEOs in regards to modernizing the government services at the White House. Some of the CEOs include, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, Executive Chairman of Alphabet, formerly known as Google, Eric Schmidt, the CEO of Apple Tim Cook. Microsoft CEO Shantan Yunarin, as well as the PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel. These are just some of the many expected attendees. Furthermore, every invited CEO has been requested to bring another high-quality technology expert to contribute to the productivity of the meeting. 
we think of ourselves as having 320 million customers who are our citizens and we want them to receive digitally enabled government services that are as good as what they receive in the private sector, said a senior Trump administration official of the gathering. The CEOs and other invited technology experts can brainstorm ideas for the brilliancy of modernizing government services during the meeting that will consist out of 10 workshops over four hours. The country's IT infrastructure is one major area and part of the modern society that President Trump will work on improving. He is arguing that a modernized IT system would have a great impact and therefore greatly benefit the American people, as well as save taxpayer dollars. Officially, the government currently spends about $80 billion a year on IT. We think we can save a lot of that by making the infrastructure better and more efficient is something that the official noted. The government will also put in their best effort into making our IT systems more secure and stable, and thus reduce fraud and protect citizens' data. President Trump is obviously working hard to get these done and provide value to the American people, despite all of this endless Russia investigation drama and other made-up controversies. President Trump knows how to use other entrepreneurs to fix our government's services, first as being a businessman himself, and then as being the president. The media, of course, is never satisfied with the president's efforts nor is going to report on this or anything positive the president does. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predictions. Revealed Democrats Criticize the Wrong Men The U.S. isn't the only state affected from the Muslim rage. In fact, other countries who are experiencing the same are starting to work on their defense together. In the moment, there's a mist about who in the Western world posse is a threat from within our borders, but at least for now there's still a consensus that the radicals who preach death need to be faced. When we are speaking war terms the two states playing main roles are surely America and Russia. However, on this case particularly, maybe, just maybe we can count on each other's back. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. According to Russia. One of the ISIS's organizers was killed during the airstrikes in Syria. CNN reports, Russia's defense ministry says it is investigating reports that ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi was killed in one of its airstrikes in Syria last month. The airstrike on May 28 was carried out on the outskirts of the militant group's de facto capital Raqqa, on a command post where ISIS leaders were meeting. The ministry said, According to information that is being verified through various channels, the leader of ISIS Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi was also present at the meeting and was killed as a result of the strike. Lot of people are certain that this war will see its on when we start to accept this watered-down version of Islam and its exceptional growth state side. What are your thoughts on this? Comment section Wow. Obama tax audit exposes millions in offshore accounts stolen from taxpayers. In what may turn out to be one of the most legacy damaging stories of the last decade, it seems that royalty payments for Obamacare to the sum of $411 million has been paid by the U.S. Treasury to three offshore, tax haven, accounts under the name of Barry Soetoro, LCC. The payments were made under the Obamacare bill from 2010 to cover the expenses and royalties associated with naming the bill. These payments were officially stopped as the bill was renamed the Affordable Care Act. Let's check out the salient points, payments were made for the naming of and royalties associated with Obamacare. These payments were to a company registered as Barry Soetoro, LCC. Barack Obama has denied many times that Barry Soetoro is an alias he uses. Someone behind the naming of Obamacare is clearly called Barry Soetoro. The payments were made into three accounts spread across the Cayman Islands, Ireland and Caledonia. The payments came from the U.S. Treasury. So who is this Barry Soetoro? It is clearly someone of influence, they did after all name the Obamacare bill, and they haven't paid taxes on the money in the U.S. That's almost $170 million in unpaid taxes. We need answers to this. Source, FFF. Seconds ago. U.S. border raises awareness with this warning.
a former United States Marine patrolling the Mexico-Texas border has a disturbing message for all Americans. Think again when you are insulting the people voting for Donald Trump. In an interview with Dennis Michael Lynch, a former U.S. Marine who served in the Middle East is now an active member of a border group that patrols the southern border. He is a former bomb expert trained by the Department of Defense. He got the nickname as Talon, and shared his thoughts about the other than Mexicans that have been coming through the border quite a while. He said, the Chinese and Middle East people coming through the border are not coming here to cut our lawns and wash dishes. They hate us with a passion. We are infidels and they think we deserve to die. On the question on the possibility of another 9-11? Talon answered, I'm shocked it hasn't happened yet. Let me tell you once they figure out how to get a nuke through the border, we will lose a U.S. city. There are congressional reports that reveal the drug cartels work with terror groups from the Middle East. For those of us already living in border states this is a familiar feeling. We see what's coming in on a daily basis. Our cities are being overrun by gang crime like never before. The best of the best doesn't just walk across our borders. These aren't children with divinity in their eyes as Nancy Pelosi calls them. Since President Trump's inauguration, there has been a sharp decrease in illegals crossing the border illegally, but we won't be secure until the wall is built and we are able to stop them completely. What are your thoughts on this? Comment section below.